So as we get my slides up um, to, to, to show you today, um, as I said, I've, I've been at UEF uh, as um, a postdoctoral researcher first, and then uh, assistant, associate, and then full professor. Um, coming over from the UK, as you can guess from my accent, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not an American from birth. Um, and then I moved into the entrepreneurial aspects of UEF about five or six years ago. But I've, as the University of Alaska Fairbanks has a $120 million a year research institution, we're all innovators that are associated with UEF. But what I'll be talking about today is what we're doing in what we call Center ICE, the different programs that we have, the ways that we're supporting student resilience, the ways that we are building up capacity in the university, and the ways that we're supporting the community and the state and building up capabilities here in Alaska to become global innovators, bringing revenue into the region and also transferring knowledge and revenue out to benefit Alaska and, and the United States. So Center ICE itself, um, the, the program has been around for about five years or so, and we've got both internal funding and we've generated grant funding to provide the resources that I'll be talking to you about today. So, um, as was introduced, I came here as a postdoctoral researcher, and I've held multiple different roles. Um, my research interest is natural hazards and um, actually unmanned vehicles. And for those that were here last week or watched last week's discovery talk, it was actually by the, the boss of that center, Professor Cahill, and that's my personal research interests. But the other half of what I do on a regular basis is what you'll be hearing about today, which is innovation and entrepreneurship. So where does this fit within university research? So academic researchers, whether they be a faculty member or a staff member or a student, they fit over on what we call the left-hand side of this, of, of this area, which is the sort of getting your idea or building on your idea, looking for funding, developing a proposal or a submission, putting that out there, getting that awarded, working on that, and then finishing the work. And you, at the end of this, you generate some knowledge, you generate publication, graduate some students, and you build up something that can benefit yourself and society. But then what we're doing is helping to take that developed knowledge, those developed products and solutions, and turn them into technologies that a business outside of the university could access, helping faculty and staff start a business that can bring research to the university, bring research to their company and build up the economy of the region and support students to be able to do this in what we call experiential learning and then graduate, become more resilient of employees of the future. So we're sort of on the right hand side of this to these two circles. Where does this all fit in UEF as a, as a whole? So the Chancellor of the University, Chancellor White, put together a, multiple different groups to build out this five-year strategic plan. And one of those, if you look at these six uh, goals, one of them is what it calls transforming intellectual property and commercialization enterprise. So what, a lot of what we're doing is lining up with the university-wide mission to build up the capabilities of the university and how to transfer that into societal benefits, both local, regional, national, and international. We're providing experiential learning experiences to modernize the student experience. We're growing this culture of respect and diversity and inclusion by involving the full university spectrum from a full professor to a certificate generating student or a undergraduate first year. But also we're covering the full breadth of university research. So we're lining up with key academic programs, with helping the university reach this tier one status and also in ensuring that we strengthen our position as a global leader of Alaska indigenous studies. So while we are focused around that one, tier one goal, we at Center ICE and the work that I do spreads across all of the strategic planning goals. The borough and the state is going through its most recent comprehensive economic development strategy. And this is the current uh, draft that's out there that will become the next five years for the region and also the statewide ones. So you can see that some of these topics on the right hand side, education and workforce development, train the next generation of employees for our lasting businesses. Small business development, how we can support 
five, 10, 50 people in a business, rather than in addition to the large multinationals and national companies. But then what are some of the areas of industry focus that Alaska, Fairbanks, and the university can work on? Energy, right next door to those here in, in, in Fairbanks, Alaska Center for Energy and Power, we're collaborating with them and other different areas. We're connecting to the military establishments here in the state, and I'll highlight an example. So not only are we aligned with what the university is looking to do, we in the center are also connected to the wider economic strategy for the region and for the state. This sort of next slide shows a multitude of different parts of what we do. Everything from uh, supporting those starting in their academic career, first generation students, K-12 age range, all the way through to developing technologies in the bottom left, new payload bays for unmanned systems, the bottom right next to the logo, a staff member developing a sanitization system for N95 masks at the beginning of the pandemic, to biological research based around the hibern hibernation of ground squirrels that can help humans during catastrophic injuries to be able to, when they're being transported to medical establishments. So really it's providing training, resources, services, support, both funding and personnel to help the innovators already here to become greater than they already are. So it was mentioned what they call the Office of Intellectual Property and Commercialization. So as an academic, academic institution, university researchers have the ability to license and commercialize federally funded work. All academic institutions would have what's known as a technology transfer office. We call it Office of Intellectual Property and Commercialization or OIPC. So this is here to provide the resources to help understand what's an inventive technology, a solution, a product, and connect those researchers to those interested in having that as part of their products. Future could be a new company, could be an existing company. So Office of Intellectual Property or the Technology Transfer Office, academic institutions around the world have these. Some of them have, much, have large groups of 50, 100 people, depending on the size of the institution. So there's this technology transfer office. And then Centre ICE was sort of putting the, the position between the external to the university and the internal to provide training, support, and resources to move some of these technologies through into societal benefit. The team, it's not just me. Um, you're probably hearing me explaining lots and lots of things and you're thinking, how does Peter do all of this in 24 hours when it's half of his job? It's a team of, you see, uh, eight, and there's many more that work with us, some in short time periods, some are internships, some on funded projects. But we've got a breadth of um, engineers who are also patent lawyers in the top left. We've got um, energy specialists, outreach specialists, administrative team members, ocean economy specialists, um, and then we've got an innovation fellow that we have a new person coming in every year. So it takes a team to become what we are. I think sort of uh, the University of Alaska Fairbanks is that is what is part of the UEF is we're a team, whether we're in the liberal arts, the, the um, physical sciences, in an institution or a college, we're part of a team. We come together to be great at some of our parts. Um, and what we've been doing since we uh, Center ICE came together as a, as, as a, as a group is um, building different parts of our programming. And we had all of these programs set up, um, but we saw that there was actually a process where an individual could go all the way from an initial idea to maybe launch a company, maybe uh, develop a product that someone else might be interested in. So we had all of these different programs, but we didn't really have a way of lining up how you could go through all the steps. Do you want to come in at step one? Do you want to come in halfway through because you've already got some funding? Or do you want to, are you right at the end, but you just need a little nudge, a little gap to get across the barrier? So in early this year, we formed some, set up something called the Innovation Accelerator. Sort of all of our programmings, seeing how they lined up. So if somebody said, oh, I'm at this stage, they could come in at stage four. They've already gone through the other three stages as part of their work. So what you'll see now on the right-hand side is numbers one to nine, and as I go through, you'll see where I am in that nine step steps. So you'll see, oh, I've 
got a bit of funding, I've developed an idea, I've been working with my colleagues, but now I need some support to go out and potentially talk to people interested in it. Or I know sort of what my interested groups are, but I need some extra support to build up and scale up the, what I've developed. So we have what we call the dream stage. So this is at the very beginning. Um, in the startup entrepreneurial world, they call it ideation. Um, and then um, on the right hand side, we have a program in a, out of a grant for what we call seed funding. So this is to, you've got an idea and you want to try, you want to try working on it. Whether you need some materials or some supplies or some um, funding um, in terms of a stipend to, to get that to happen. So this is the initial dream phase. You're building it up, you're testing it. Students going through this ideation, iteration phase, test and evaluate, test and evaluate, because that's what you'll be doing as you leave the academic environment in, in a small business or even in a large um, national or multinational organization. Then we have what we call the build. So you've got this, you've worked on this idea, you've got a bit of funding, you've, you've been collectively be developing it with colleagues, and we have now four different areas. One that we called customer discovery or stakeholder discovery, where you're going to say, I've developed this cool idea, this product, this widget, this solution, but does anybody want it? So before you even go along, I'm gonna form a company or I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna spend a lot of research inv investment into it, you wanna go and talk to who might be interested in, in using it. This could be communities, this could be individuals, this could be large organizations. Um, and I'll talk about um, how the federal government is developing the programs to actually allow researchers to do this. Also, you wanna make sure that the developed technology that you've worked on is yours and you get recognized for it. So this is known as intellectual property protection. Making sure that you as the inventor and the university, if you're an employee, are recognized correctly if somebody wants to, to, to cake it on and continue to work on it. Then there's what's called gap funding. So you're coming to an end of a project and you can see there's an opportunity, let's say six months into the future, but you need something in between to help you to continue to work on your product. And all of this is about building something that can have a benefit beyond you and beyond the university. So this could be to help start a company that can expand and move that, those products, those solutions out into Alaska and outside. Or it could be to bring revenue into the region to help grow and develop it. And then we're also transitioning and gonna be starting this up in the next year, pitch competition. So let's say, for example, someone on the room says, hey, I've got this really cool idea. Like, okay, pitch it to us. Tell us what you think it is. And we might, it might fit with what we're looking to do and we'll help to support it. So come and pitch it to us. So we're gonna do those events throughout the year, across the university, even connecting to the community, to say, hey, what idea have you got that you might have been working on, on the, in, in your spare time? Or you might have been working on in, um, um, in your academic um, uh, every day? And let's help support that and grow and allow you to actually expand upon those initial ideas. And then the third aspect is launch. So you've got an idea, it's been funded, you know who's interested in it. Then we have some training capabilities through two uh, programs from the federal government. We've got support in terms of promotion, outreach, connecting you with the statewide ecosystem and physical space. So if you're wanting space to come and work with those at the university or you're in the university and wanna come and work with colleagues of similar interest, then um, we have a space here in the building where the talk is happening this evening on the fourth floor of the engineering building. All of these we've had going for a while, but we've never sort of lined them up and said, here's how they fit into the wider picture. Here's how you, if you have a business or an idea, would fit into it, rather than going, oh, you've got this cool center, how can you help me? It's like, well, we've got these programs, where can we help fit into what are your need, where you are on your journey? So, what are some of those opportunities in detail? And what are some examples we've done, supported, um, and how we've helped um, those beyond ourselves? So I spoke about this ideation, sort of what they call design thinking or thinking outside the box. 
Um, last couple of years, I've run something that I call the Nook Tank. Uh, play on word from the Nook, the uh, university uh, mascot, and, and then the thinking of pitch tanks to, and sort of uh, where you're pitching an idea in front of investors. I did a sort of mix of them where we would bring people in the, into a room for a couple of hours and we put up a topic on the, on the wall, I don't know. Uh, engineering impact from changing permafrost. Just take that as an example. And everybody in the room picks up some post-its, puts them on the wall, phrases that they associate with that term. So it's like changing climate, uh, sinking ground, testing materials. And you put all of that up on the wall and you end up with 50 or 60 post-it notes. And then everybody sits down, you divide the room up by the tables, and you say, okay, table one, go up to the wall, take two post-its off the wall that none of your team members put up, that someone else in the room put up. And now spend the next hour designing a solution to that phrase or term that solves that problem of engineering issues from permafrost. So what the teams that do it, we've done it mainly with students, is they're learning, they have to potentially take someone else's inspiration, someone else's innovation, and work on it themselves even though they had a separate idea at the beginning. So they start to understand what it's like to work in teams, but also to be given an idea from somebody and then have to bring a solution forwards. So it's sort of like you would do in a business. You'd be given something from a, a manager in a program and you'd work on that project and then report back your results. You wouldn't start from the initial idea, maybe develop yourself. We had the teams present the top right image. The teams presented to alumni from the UAF um, and then they were awarded um, bear bucks, and then we've had others where they've been awarded um, access to some of our other programs as part of the winning. But the focus of this is short, fast-paced events, hour, hour and a half, maybe even a couple of hours, where you just start thinking outside the box. You don't have a constraint. It's, it's the class. It does have to be included in some exam. It's not part of your grade. It's like, okay, just sit down. Here's a topic and brainstorm and potentially you'll end up with a new solution that could become something you then get funding to develop upon or could become a, a new business that you, you work upon. So inspiring these new ideas outside some of the traditional channels of academic classes. That's an ideation event. This was inspired from a national program uh, managed by a group called Techstars called Startup Weekends. And this is heavily focused on launching companies. Where in, in Alaska, we've, we've ran a couple and we're looking to run another one here in Fairbanks, where it's both academics, university people, anybody in the region comes in and starts pitching ideas. You work on them over, over 54 hours in a weekend and potentially you can launch a company from this. We've had successful companies in Alaska being launched from these. Um, one in Anchorage called 60 Hertz um, that's that had multi-million dollar investments and multi-million dollar research projects that was initially pitched at one of these in 2016. Um, and if you search for Techstars Startup Weekends businesses, you, there's many more around the country. It's a space and a time to just think outside the box when you would say, oh, it's too busy, I've got things going on in the evenings, I've got this at the weekend. Come in, have a weekend, food provided for, a relaxing space and just the ability to think and inspire and get connected to like-minded individuals. So now into the dream phase. So this is sort of a, a, an overlap between ideation and dream. On the image on the right-hand side, um, and I'll show some other examples. So during the um, initial starting of the pandemic uh, during 2020, we funded some projects where academics that are in one particular area pitched ideas to develop out new solutions to support us as the society was going through the changing um, environment of the initial pandemic. So what you see actually on the right hand side there is Jeff Rothman, he's a staff, staff member at the Geophysical Institute. His everyday job normally is developing infrasound sensors. So for uh, CTBTO testing and volcanoes are about the size of a, a, golf, a hockey puck and that's mo most of what he does every day but he saw that he could develop a sanitization system for N95 masks when there was a really big uh, limit on the number that individuals were able to and even medical establishments were able to. So he present presented to us, pitched and submitted an idea, used his engineering skills and applied it to 
this need at that time. That's and then a, an inspiring an idea where you're bringing your skills to a timely problem, but you're not maybe applying it to what you do every day, but you're, bringing, you're, you're innovating around a need. We've also done that at the undergraduate level. Um, so UAF undergraduate students have their senior design project, whether it's mechanical, civil, or electrical. Um, and you see here two examples. Uh, on the left-hand side, some mechanical engineering students uh, supported an entrepreneur who was looking at developing an auto-inflating system for avalanche impact. So building auto-inflating um, in the side pockets of a rucksack such that when there's an avalanche impact, that they will inflate really quickly and quickly produce the cocoon around you so then you're not being impact impacted by the avalanche. So the students worked on the auto-inflation system, uh, got some materials and resources support from us, and were able to help build out a design and help the entrepreneur. On the right-hand side, there's two other projects. The top one um, is a team working on a um, collapsible backboard for search and rescue. So basically, it can be folded down into the backpack when the person's going out, and when they reach the person needing injury, they're able to fold it out, lock it in place, and then carry the person back. So it minimizes them having to carry out a backboard in fully flat mode while they're hiking out to the individual. And then the bottom was a team developing a, a new system for cargo delivery for unmanned systems. They were doing this as part of their engineering degree. They were um, matching up with the requirements for their degree, but they were able to get resources and material support from us for this new innovative design. I mentioned uh, on the far right, uh, Jeff Rothman from the GI. On the left-hand side, we have an engineering professor working on testing um, homemade PPE masks. And then in the middle, we have a researcher from the University of Alaska Southeast, whose main area is in coastal science was developing some new methodologies to evaluate uh, the susceptibility and the vulnerability of community populations in Alaska. So basically taking his statistics knowledge and applying it to the pandemic. So UAF, University of Alaska researchers, are innovative because they use the skills they've developed and apply them to timely needs. And that's one thing that we at Centrize look to support, because then you've got solutions that can transition out into the community be it local, or regional, or national, so for the greater good. We've also supported what we call makerspaces. So these are growing around the country, multiple different uh, areas of the academic program that they're supporting. And it's, a, it, as I always say, makerspace. Take the two words, flip them, or two parts of the word, flip it, split it in half. It's a space to make things. Um, you think of, for those that may have been in academia a few years ago, you think of the labs you used to go into. It's sort of the 21st century type of lab space. It's not just 3D printers, it's, it's everything. It's visual arts, it's developing new capabilities for doing media, it's providing a space for wellness and belonging and being. It's these spaces that allow you to think outside the box, but in a, in a safe environment, the ability to take a risk. So we've supported these through materials and resources. These have led to inspiring students to come to college. These have led to students working on the bottom right in this space on new hydroponic systems for growing, um, growing crops and growing vegetables. All of this is how to use the knowledge and resources of the university to benefit the university, because we're looking to graduate students and, and, and support our faculty and staff, but also to benefit society in the region. So the university becomes this place of knowledge, but also becomes this place of transfer of knowledge to support um, everybody in the state. Also, I mentioned about licensing technology. So as an academic institution, we're able to do that for federally funded research. So one example here is a faculty member, uh, Professor Drew, as part of her research, has done some uh, pharmaceutical uh, work on to help uh, humans during shivering, um, during um, severe injuries. So she worked on that as part of, as a faculty member. She then is able to um, get that licensed, and she's actually able to allow, can be done with her in the business and licensing the technology. So she has an Alaskan-based company 
that is getting federally funded research to continue the development of this. And then the university is licensing the technology so she can expand and go after funding resources that the university wouldn't be able to. There are small business research grants or there are training programs that a small business can apply for. Professor Drew is applying for them for the National Institute of Health and there's other places, Science Foundation, Department of Energy, Department of Defense, Department of Education, that small businesses, so less than 500 individuals, can apply for, where the university can support and help, but the business itself applies for and brings more revenue into the region, whether it be Alaska or, Fair or Fairbanks individually. Then there's the build, and this is actually funded by the National Science Foundation, um, and it's one of a number of federal institutions that have this funding available. Department of Defense does, National Institute of Health, Energy, I'm trying to think of what else, a couple of others. And it's about supporting, transitioning this basic and applied research into societal good projects that can actually benefit society and help us as humans to um, grow and as a society. So before you've invested a lot of money in developing something that maybe doesn't have a direct need, they have something called customer discovery. I would also call it stakeholder discovery or community discovery. And it's support and training to say, okay, I developed this cool idea. I've got this product that I think, project or solution that I think is going to work. But is there, a, is there a need for it in society? Is there a need for it in where I want to um, connect with? So going and talking to people, as we say, getting out of the door, getting out of the room. So let's say I've got, a, I've got my technology, my product, and I'm going to move it out into a societal benefit. Well, let's go into the centre of Fairbanks and talk to individuals. Let's travel to, to the level 48. Let's go to Hawaii, maybe go, go to Hawaii. Let's go to Washington State or Illinois and go and talk to some individuals and, and listen to what their needs are. To, make, to see if what I've developed fits those needs. So therefore you're gaining some training in how to talk to individuals about what you've developed, but also finding out if you actually have something that they need and must have. Businesses go through this all the time as they're developing things. Academic research can also have a benefit to society as well as business development. So that's what these training programs are there for. Examples, um, we've got, I've got two, two slides here that show two companies one that's uh, spun out of UAF and one that's actually uh, managed by a UAF alumni that have gone through our training program. So this is uh, Aquaga um, that went through our training program in 2019. Since then, they've generated, uh, at least as far as I know, uh, $300,000 to $400,000 worth of research funding, which is investment into the company to develop on technologies successfully received a US patent, winners of an environmental challenge supported by Alaska Airlines from the University of Washington, members of a technology development track here in the state, and I'm, I know that they've also had many other projects because I hear about them at monthly and, and quarterly meetings of, of the statewide ecosystem. They've even had summer interns from our student population, part of their program. An example of where some of our initial support helped them get along the stage and then accelerated and grew and expanded and, and generated revenue and brought in research funding. Another example, this is uh, Cartorium. Uh, Jay Byam is, the, is one of the co-founders and he's an alumni of UEF. Uh, he worked in the um, private sector industry for many years and then formed his own company. He went through our training program in 2021. He then joined an accelerator program in Anchorage. He built up his customer base and industry connections through our training program. Then last, this just the year, he won the Alaska Angel Conference, $100,000 investment into his company. He's joined the Launch Alaska uh, Technology de uh, Deployment Track, and he's hosted four interns, and uh, he's continuing to grow his company. The connections he made in our program led him to build out the business because of support we provided him as his small business, in addition, as you saw, to the previous one that was uh, connected directly to the university from the research. Here, these programs are there to support the state, to support state-based businesses, 
also those coming out of the university to grow and expand and become bigger and greater and bring revenue into the state. This program we have is the first step in multiple phases of funding that are available from the federal government. So they're called Small Business Innovation Research or Small Business Technology Transfer. A small business, as you can see, they are the lead that applies for them. You can see in this top one example from NASA, I forgot that, that was an example, the amount of funding that is available. This is all about building and growing your company. You can run this in parallel with a university. You can run this supporting students at the university. All of this is to grow the capacity of the academic institution, but also support the development of these businesses. Have them stay in Alaska, come to Alaska to partner with UAF. And as a result, you're bringing that revenue into the region and getting it spent locally. And as and you're building a new industry, a new business that stays here, their employees stay here, they, their kids go to school here, and you can build up the community. The build side, I spoke about this intellectual property aspect. So the image on the right is a, a previous faculty member, but it highlights an example of a project. So uh, at the time, Professor McDonnell built out this technology. And as a result, it's now something that the university can help promote, help develop connections that businesses might be interested in continuing to develop this technology and working in parallel with the university, whether it be this example would be the College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences, could be the College of Liberal Arts, College of Engineering and Mines, Geophysical Institute, and I could go down the different deep colleges and institutes within the university. By recognizing the inventors, the individuals that worked upon this, along with the university, everybody can move forwards together and those inventors get recognized for the work that they've put into this over many years of their academic career. The gap, fun the gap funding that I mentioned, uh, this is something that's spinning out of our seed funding. The image here you see on the right is uh, Dr. Barati that was working upon a uh, infrared spectroscopy device to support um, in terms of her um, brain injury and brain research. Um, and this was gaining gap funding to be able to help her and her colleagues move that technology ready to apply for a large research grant. On the launch side, um, we've received some funding uh, from the Small Business Administration in collaboration with three other universities in the, the United States to provide training for very early stage businesses on the process to apply for these research grants. I mentioned this small business SBIR or STTR opportunity. Alaska has a great chance to grow into this area. There's a large amount of funding in the federal government for these types of grants. So any way that we can help and support small businesses in the region to be more successful to gain these awards can only be beneficial for the region. So you see the four institutions that are represented, including UAF, and we have these what we call cohort training programs to explain the process, what, what it takes to submit to a particular funding agency, talking to previous winners of these, again, transferring knowledge to help grow the business environment, the economic area here in the state. The example here, um, this is sort of the type of funding. I highlighted that example for NASA. But as part of the accelerator program, it's all the different aspects that a business would go to and go for to apply for these projects. So you're seeing here that at Center Ice, through these type of grants, not only can we support those inside the academic environment, we can also support those outside the academic environment to grow up and support the economy of the region. We also have a support mechanism through multiple different channels. Um, we have a social media presence to promote and highlight projects going on in the university and uh, local events. Um, we have a, what we call a monthly ice jam, which is a networking event. We started this up summer of 2020 to provide a space and a time for people to come together when everybody was mostly, at ho nearly everybody was at home and you wanted a space and a time to integrate, chat, network, socialize, learn. We've continued to do that. We've had multiple events 
Uh, we're actually running an event, supporting an event tomorrow on rural business development with Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation. So we provide a webinar capability to run those events. Again, it's coming together as a region, coming together as a community, not only UAF, economic development community, small business development community, both locally and, and statewide. Together, we can be better than our individual organizations. And then the last sort of thing that I'm going to cover um, is our Students to Startups program. So one of the things I highlighted earlier as part of the UAF strategic plan was modernizing the student experience. So there are internship programs at the university that have been around for a while and others that have come in to give students, as they're in their academic environment, experience of what it's like to work with and for a business or an organization. So we set one up um, focused around Alaskan startup companies. So these are, and small businesses. So these are sort of businesses growing, looking at new opportunities for, for revenue generation. So we connect students from within the University of Alaska, both UA, all, all three institutions, UAF, UA, and UAS, with these companies. And they work on summer projects. They, def, they sort of define their project in sort of springtime, April-ish. And then they work on those throughout the year, or throughout the summer, from May to, to August. So we're nearly wrapped up. But they also get to help the companies in all different aspects. It could be promotional material. It could be developing a presentation for an investor. It could be helping on an outreach event. So they're getting to see all the aspects of what it's like to be in that environment that they might go into after they graduate. But they're seeing it in a summer-based time period. And they also learn about what it's the startup, small business world from a from a sort of um, organizational standard. What is it like? What would you be expecting to see in a startup environment? What are, what are ways to apply for funding? So they're learning about this whilst also going through a basically a job. And then they come back to college. They go through their final year or the final two years. And then they may end up going out into this industry. But they've seen it in a sort of 12-week period. And they get to develop connections, collaborations that can help them for many years into the future. So this is the fourth year of running it. Uh, we've had 37 interns that we've supported over the four years, 22 companies. You see here on the left some examples. Uh, I highlighted Cartorium and Aquaga earlier. The image in the top right is Airhounds, a business in, Alaska, in Anchorage that's developing uh, sensors to detect for um, to detect uh, air quality and, and safety of, of individuals going in and out of buildings. Elevated Oats is a, is a food-based organization, entrepreneurs in Anchorage. Roaming Root Cellar, for those in, here in town, they recognize that. That's, um, the, they've got a business down at the, um, over in the west side of, uh, of town. And then the launch company is a, a, a group out of Anchorage in the Kodak area, the developing uh, rocket-based capacities. You can see the quite a broad spectrum there from computer vision, computer science, to, to engineering, to food-based, to sensors, to, to, to rocket-based. It's all about supporting businesses in the region, but building students' capacity to be resilient and employees as they graduate. So they have the skills to be good employees of these, of these businesses and whatever business they go into, but also they've developed their, what we call deep dive expertise in their degrees. Also, they get to hear, as I said, about the uh, statewide ecosystem. Uh, this was from actually from last year, where we, I was talking about the programs going on within uh, some of our military establishments. And I'll talk about that um, in my, actually in my last block of slides uh, before we get to any questions from those in the room. But they also get to learn about, in more detail, what you've heard today, all the different aspects of what it's like to be in this entrepreneurial innovation ecosystem. So I, I grabbed three examples of those 30 or so interns, uh, two from UAA and one from UF. So Jessica was part of our program last year. She, she worked with Cartorium, so she worked with Jay and his team. Um, and then since then, she's actually worked for two companies, um, one that came to our Mixer event at the beginning, and she's currently a web developer with Design Ori in Anchorage, and she's completing her computer science degree and will go on and become an, a 
hopefully, a resilient and, and high quality employee for wherever she goes. Corey Giddings, um, he's actually an electrical engineer at UAA, and he worked with two companies last summer, Elevated Oats that I mentioned, and Remora, that is a, a flight based or looking at uh, cargoes and, um, with um, rural Alaskan companies. And they've just recently joined the 49th State Angel Funds uh, portfolio. And since then, Corey is now uh, continuing his degree. Uh, he's actually got some grant funding in his degree as well. But at the same time, he's continued to work with Elevated Oats as a sales and executive assistant and become part of their team because of the experience this summer. Who knows where this will lead for his future career? And then Joshua at the bottom, uh, mechanical engineering. He worked for Aquaga uh, with their team last summer. Um, he returned to do his master's here. He joined the Makerspace team at the Teaching Through Technology space that's in the Duckering building next door to the building that we're in this evening here for those in town. And he's going to graduate from his master's and move on to next, the next things. But the experience that he gained from working in Aquaga gave him the ability to see what it's like to work in a small team, fast-paced, multiple things going on at once. And therefore, he can, he can use those skills along with his engineering skills to greater good when he goes on and graduates from college. I mentioned uh, I was going to finish off with a couple final slides. The first one is what we call Startup Week. So this is um, a, a week's worth of events across the state. So for anybody watching online or watching later oh, and in the room, we have, um, we'll be starting a team uh, probably in the next week or so, building out these events. Happens the week just before Thanksgiving. So the week before Thanksgiving, not the week of Thanksgiving. Um, and it's during Global Entrepreneurship Week. And there's both in-person and virtual events across Alaska focusing on startup businesses and small businesses, from seminars to open houses to learning events to socializing. And we at Center Ice have, have helped our local economic development team and small business team put on events in the region, both on campus and in the community. So if you type in Startup Week Alaska, you'll find uh, previous years and uh, come sort of September timeframe, you'll be seeing more about what we're going to be doing this year. So that's something to look forward to. And then I mentioned briefly about um, last, last year as part of the Students of Startups. We had um, the uh, military establishments come in to, uh, and talk. So here at Arlson Air Force Base, uh, just outskirts of Fairbanks, and also at Joint Base Almondorf Richardson, in the Air Force part, they formed what are known as innovation teams, or they call them innovation cells. And Iceman Spark is the one at um, Arlson Air Force Base. And what they do is they have uh, individuals from across the base come together and listen and hear about some of the problems that of everyday operations here working in the Arctic. And they look at innovative ways to try and solve those problems, or they look at ways within the Air Force to put together a team and go after opportunities, whether it's funding, whether it's resources, whether it's training, to bring that to the base and to be able to solve and produce a solution to that need. Also, um, back in 2019, uh, I got the chance to meet the, the team that was forming this group and said, hey, why don't you come and see how UF could help? So we brought the uh, personnel on, on, onto university campus and they were interested, happy to hear about UF's interest to work with them. And so we built out a process where they would list some projects that they might need some assistance on that they didn't have the capacity in their team to work on. And we partnered and said, OK, well, we've got the Honours College at the university. For those students in the Honours College looking at an, a research project, an interdisciplinary project to work on, we had the students from Honours College work on a problem set provided by the Air Force Base and then presented the results back to the Air Force Base from the work the students had done. So the students are working on a real world problem, whether it be engineering or at the humanities, and then presented it back to the Air Force team, and they were then, then to, able to present it back to their superiors and work out ways to integrate it and how did they do their day-to-day -day operations. So it's a way that the university can support local military establishments and provide personnel, skills, capacity, capabilities to support our military, whether it be the Air Force or the Army in its mission up here in Alaska. And then finally, what is happening in Alaska? My talk title said about the statewide ecosystem. Today you've heard 
a, a, a list and a, some details about what we're doing at Centre Ice. But we're one part of a growing statewide entrepreneurial ecosystem. When I started my business in 2013, probably maybe three or four of what you see on that slide existed. We're talking, top one is us, RPC Centre Ice. One million cups is a weekly opportunity for businesses to present on what they're doing. Our Arctic Innovation Competition was around. That's managed by the College of Business and Security Management here. Ocean Cluster, uh, Blue Economy Center, that's now started up here. Launch Alaska is new, that's the tech deployment track. I mentioned the Department of Innovation, uh, the Department of Defense's innovation team. Small Business Development Center, there's a Fairbanks office and there's offices around the state. Alaska Angel Conference, I mentioned about that with uh, Cartorian winning it. Spruce Root is a, a group based out of Alaska Southeast. The three economic development centers, Fairbanks, Anchorage, and Juneau. Innovation Summit happens every year in Juneau, this is in February. Uh, there's programs at University of Alaska Southeast, Center for Economic Development, internships, upstart programs, accelerator called G Beta, 49th State Angel Fund, Startup Week, social media. And that's just what I could put on the slide without overloading everybody with acronyms and terms. There is a growing and continuing to grow entrepreneurial ecosystem here in Alaska, not just in, within the university. And there's going to be a lot more. There are some funding opportunities from the federal government coming that a lot of us are very interested in, in within Alaska to get some very significant funding focused around innovation and entrepreneurship. So I would say watch this space. There could be some pretty big significant funding coming in, not just for the university, but for the state of Alaska with UAF and other parts of the university system are playing as we go forwards. So on that note, I would say thank you for those coming. Any questions from the room, happy to answer. Um, and then we'll make sure that my slide deck is available for anybody that wants to get any of the terms, emails, but um, the email will get through to me um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions from the room. So over to the room. So I think the biggest thing to say is, so the UEF is that we have this, I mentioned at the very beginning, about $120 million a year that UEF gets in federal research and UAA and UAS themselves also have significant research components. But what I, I'm hoping you've seen tonight is how Center ICE and UAF in general is working ways to transition some of that research out into opportunities that can pr provide for, for, the, for the state as well. Whether it be a technology that can be developed into something that can bring in additional economic growth or funding mechanisms that can train our students or train those in the community to be more resilient, to grow their businesses, to increase the econ economic growth into the region. Um, everything that, I've, that you've shown us, shown today is to support those in the university, but many of them I've listed, if anybody's online listening that's a business that's looking for some support, started up a new idea, wants some training, looking for some funding, wants to connect with somebody at the university, says, oh, I know there's a program in X, and my business is in that. Maybe we might be able to collaborate and go after a funding opportunity. We're here to help. We're here to listen. Whatever we can do to provide is what we're here for. Um, and really, it's, as I said, give us an e send us an email, give us a call, come into, the, come into the space, which is on this fourth floor of the engineering building and we'll be happy to just listen to your needs and see how we can help to move forwards together. And I see a question after having a gentleman's hand up in the room, given what I've just said. So hopefully it's a good response. Dr. Wickley, yes. I was wondering if you could go back to the slide that had the, the list of all the, the companies and tell us sort of what they did. What, what kind, like Coratorium, what yes. is it? Thank you. Yeah, so this is an example of a few. As I said, there's 22 companies that we've supported. So Cartorium is um, a company based out of Anchorage, and they're developing what's called di a digital twin. And you're probably thinking, what's a digital twin? It's like, I, if you've got a twin, you're like, why do I need a digital version of a twin? Um, what they're doing is they're building an online platform that allows businesses to do virtual, uh, virtual assessments of their their facilities. Maybe it's uh, helping training. 
So putting people in a training environment without having to put them into the environment itself. So they're building a software system that allows businesses to be able to build training in for their employees in a digital twin. So the digital twin is a digital version of their facility. Top right hand side, Airhounds. Uh, this is a father and son team based out of Anchorage and uh, they're developing um, both a software system and a sensor, eventually a sensor, that looks at and detects the dosage of potential chemicals in the air that would alert you if you're in an environment which could be susceptible to your health. Um, and then Elevated Oats is uh, started as a, 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 two, a team of two and they've grown. They're developing uh, it's a granola-based company of multiple different flavors that go into granola using Alaskan ingredients, Alaskan and Alaskan grown, um, focusing about health, healthy foods. Uh, Roaming Root Cellar uh, is um, Erica here in town. And she's got a, she started off as a, in a truck, in a, 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 in a bus, and then she's now got a physical uh, brick and mortar building. And she provides a space for Alaskan companies to sell their products in a physical space. So she has Alaskan companies that bring, sell their products to her, and she provides a space for them to sell. For them to sell. Aquaga um, started at the university here in Fairbanks and the University of Washington. And they are developing uh, a, what they call a pressure cooker on steroids. And it's... We've, we may have heard about PFAS, uh, these toxic chemicals that are in, uh, in some of our water supplies here and around the country. They're developing a process to be able to remove those from this water supply system and from the uh, leftover chemicals that are in, in, in the environment. So they've, provided, they've been provided funding by the Department of Energy. They've got projects here cl collaborating with our ministry establishments and they're building up this sensor, this, this cooking system that basically can clean out these chemicals from the water supply. The launch company is, uh, was, is, is Ben Kelly, who's a UAF uh, grad alumni, um, and they are developing um, modular systems for rocket launch capabilities, both the control system in a connex space, but also the launch space itself, and doing it at a price that makes it affordable for small businesses to be able to do. Uh, rocket-based uh, launches. And Ben himself had formed a previous company called K2 Dronautics, which is focused around unmanned systems. Um, and he left the state as an un as after his degree, went to work for SpaceX, but came back. He's, he's from here. His, his family's from here. His, him and his brother grew up here, and his, his parents were involved in the aviation industry. So that's just an example of, what is it, the five or six, six that are on that screen. Uh, We've covered everything from web-based software as a service to um, building um, platforms for people to do assessments on uh, human resource training. It's really to provide those with their business, either team members like students to, and, and interns to be able to work on new projects, to get the training and the travel support to go and talk to potential customers. Um, and the, the capacity to be, to grow, to, to grow their business here in Alaska and to continue to, continue to stay in Alaska. So they form their company and they stay here, they increase the number of employees, they get funding, they get investment, they get research projects. And as a result, you build up the economy of the region. And small businesses are a major part of the American economy. Um, and I, I, I highlighted, um, if I go back, I highlighted this example here um, this is just one example of these type of fundings that's out there. This is funding for the company to do research. This is not investment. This is direct research funding for businesses to work on. Um, you can go down the investment route here in the state. The, the Angel Conference is an investment-based one. But this is straight research funding for businesses to develop and grow here in Alaska. And we've had many that have grown up and partnered with the university, whether it be expertise, available resources, equipment, whatever it might be. Um, the more of these, the more we can build up the uh, capacity of the state. And the university is here to help in whatever way we can.